What's going on, everyone? This is Jordan with Conquer Trading and Investing, and we're getting ready here for our live session here in New York. Welcome, all those just joining us on the replay. Glad you're here with us today. Everyone joining live, good morning, good evening. Glad you're here, ready for another day. We got, we got the dollar pushing this last 30 minutes. You can see it making a push towards this local resistance right up here. Uh, definitely the tone of the day. It continues to be risk on across the board. Uh, New Zealand, Australian dollar, Japanese yen coming up into this resistance. So far backing off a tiny bit. Let's see what happens this session. New Zealand dollar, Japanese yen. New Zealand dollar is the strongest currency of the day coming off the back of the central bank announcement that they're not looking to cut rates at all in 2020 and they expect growth in the later part of the year. Look here versus the Japanese yen, the weakest, New Zealand dollar, the strongest. Look at this, up over 1.3% coming into this resistance area over here. Looking solid. It's a big resistance level. Get above, she's going much higher. What's going on, everyone? So definitely, I don't like it. I don't like uh, the the uh, the risk on, but I'm all about it. It's what's happening. Uh, watching the dollar climb over here, coming into this area this morning. Uh, it's a very light calendar. It's a very light calendar. We have Powell speaking again, testifying this morning uh, at 10 o'clock AM Eastern time. And then later we got uh governor speaking out of Australian, uh, Australia and New Zealand. Um, we're looking forward to Friday retail sales. So, uh, let's see what the day brings. Let's take a look around, see what's going on. S starting with the monster Bitcoin. Pull up a weekly chart. I think this is what we're looking at next. Yeah, right where I have this upper resistance here on Bitcoin. Let me draw a line in over here. All right. All right. Let me zoom out now, give you a better look. This is what's in play right now in Bitcoin. This trend line right here. Um, we're coming up into it now. We got the supply zone over here. You see this blue area over here and this resistance up at around, I'll call it the whole number of 11,000. Uh, I have it 11,111 if you want to get cute. But right up, right up there, uh, we're coming into an area. It looks like we're push, We're going to be pushing into it too. There's a lot of momentum here. Uh, what happens there? I mean, I expect it gets rejected. I expect we get rejected up here, and then we come back down and probably take another look at these supports down here. Um, I'd be. I'm really surprised if we break out here to the upside. But if we do break out to the upside and it holds, I don't know what's going to happen. If we break out to the upside over here, I'd be surprised right now. But I, um, to, in my opinion, once we broke out to the upside over there, that would really be igniting the bull mania part of, of the run. And I, and I think that's still uh, quite a time away. I think that's still between anywhere between, you know, five and seven months away. So I, I'm looking for price to get caught up into here. And I'm looking for this resistance to hold over here. Um, if it gives way and breaks out to the upside, I mean, happy joy, but I will be surprised. Steve, Theo, Oki, Renee, Mima, Heath, Tico, Blair. Great to see y'all. Let's, let's follow. Let's keep tracking. Let's keep tracking. Uh, gold.
interesting phenomena that I'm noticing over the last two days as the dollar coming off just a bit. Now, dollar's not coming off anymore. Dollar seems to be making a poke up here towards, uh, you know, retesting, the, revisiting the highs over here. A lot of momentum there. All right. Um, but at the same time, the dollar did come off yesterday. Gold came off with it. Uh, gold's still lagging, right? You know, see, here's yesterday, the daily bar, gold came off with the dollar. You figured dollar weakens, gold might actually take another run at the top here. That's not what happened. Gold is also, as the dollar is rising this morning, lagging behind a little bit right now. Uh, as far as reading into that too much, I'm not. Gold is consolidating and it's consolidating. You see over here, the, the high, the last local high, gold's consolidating above it. It, it remains super bullish. Um, but aside from, from leaning in somewhere right now, you're gonna lean in off this support. I'm not, I, I think that uh, right now I see risk on type environment, gold maintaining and holding, but until it becomes clear that the tide is turning where we're going to bit of a risk off, I think that it, it makes sense just to, to lay back on gold a little while, just call it neutral, neither bearish or bullish, and wait to see what develops further. Silver has been selling off a lot harder. Um, you know, it would be nice for silver to take another look down here towards 1750, right? At this support over here. Uh, that would be an interesting place with this nice little uh, resistance and supply to lean into if that is to occur. All right, let's keep going. Australian dollar looking strong, looking like it's putting in this bottom over here right now. Um, is it got a lot of work to do before I get bullish on it? It's got a lot of work to do before I get bullish on it. But right now, uh, market's pricing in, uh, risk on, and Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar are definitely leading the way here. Um, I have a feeling we take out this little local double top, this resistance I have over here. I have it at um, 0.677, right? I think we come into here next. And I think we take it out. I'm going to be interested if we get up into here, perhaps at that point, maybe looking to uh, start positioning into the short side ahead of what I think is going to be a next wave of, of risk off. But right now, Australian dollar looks to be and have a lot of momentum behind it. But it's not just against the US dollar, it's against the, the Japanese yen. Look how healthy that looks coming up into this strong resistance over here as well. Um, and then also, you guys remember this setup that I was looking at, this reverse heading shoulders here on the Australian dollar Swiss franc. Uh, and, you know, continuing to come up into this resistance as well. Australian dollar coming up into some light resistance. I think it's light against uh, multiple pairs, all three Swiss franc, Australian dollar, Japanese yen. And if, they, and if she breaks out, I think she's going much higher. So as long as this risk on environment continues, things are looking pretty, pretty good over there. This is, uh, I know Gabe caught this trade over here off the low, off the support over here. And then at, it, was a, it was one of the easier trades we've seen all year. As soon as the central bank came in, at, you know, holding on to a free trade all the way straight up into this resistance as well. And again, uh, New Zealand dollar, Japanese yen is able to take out this little resistance right here this gap might come into play. Gabe, just talking about your New Zealand dollar, Japanese trade. Facts, what's going on, Steve? Mad Mario. 
Sheriff, I'm sorry to hear that. That's that's not fun. That's not fun at all. Glad to see you back. Uh, let's take a look. Let's take a look through everything. See what else is going on. Um, tracking the dollar here. Let me come down to a smaller time frame. Let me keep this chart up. So far, right into the resistance, backing off a little bit. Calendar's light. You got Powell speaking. I can't imagine he's going to say anything new that could affect the markets. Um, so uh, forward-looking, CPI numbers on Thursday, uh, retail sales on Friday. Not much going on on the calendar right now. By the way, what's happening next week? Euro, FOMC meeting minutes, e ECB meeting minutes, and then here you go, Friday, some really important data. I had a, oh, this is big for both the Euro and the pound and retail sales out of Canada, huge day, Blockbuster Friday, next Friday, the 21st, uh, manufacturing PMI out of the US, retail sales out of Canada. I think right here, when this comes in, uh, if this number is not good, and if this number comes in poorly, the central bank is going to all of a sudden be talking about a rate cut. That could be what sets off the Canadian dollar. So I'm focused in on this number big time. Um, obviously, British pound is going to be very data dependent, uh, as well as big numbers for the EU. Blockbuster Friday, next Friday. This is uh, Hanero is looking at this this morning. This is a 60 minute chart of the Australian dollar, US dollar, as we came back up uh, above, breaking out above here, and then coming back and retest. Nothing really in the way into this next area of, of overhead resistance. I think we have a little bit of room. Let's go through all the pairs right now. Let's see what's going on. All right, first. DXY coming up into this resistance area, holding pretty steady. Australian dollar, Swiss franc breaking out of the um, breaking out of the neckline here of this reverse head and shoulders. I think DJ was the one who pointed this out originally, and you can see that this little bit of local resistance over here we're looking to clear through, and you can see at the same time uh, if you draw in this little. Right, so it looks like pressure is building up to break out to the upside um, for the next for the next move up. Now that it's broken past this area and held the support, that trade looks good and healthy. New Zealand dollar, Canadian dollar. We know that the New Zealand dollar has just been on fire overnight. Uh, this looks interesting. Still, it's come up hard and fast and a lot, and you expect a little bit of consolidation over here now. Uh, but it looks like there's there's a good chance. Again, I'm focused next Friday on the Canadian dollar retail sales, the central bank's looking for the consumer to fall off. And if it does, they're gonna be talking about rate cuts. This could continue to weaken. Watch what happens around this resistance over here. Um, right now, I expect instead of selling the resistance, it's gonna consolidate here towards the top before looking to break higher. Euro Swiss franc is, <laughs> came down into the support we had drawn in there. That, you know, uh, I don't know when we drew that in. I think we were looking for take profit levels and uh, it's come in and hit there. So it looks like it could be stabilizing, um, but this thing has just been bleeding hard and slow. I don't have the, the uh, gall to jump in here and buy off this support, nor do I see any reason why to. Euro has been lagging um, and, you know, Maybe soon enough, it's going to have its day again, but it's, it's been lagging. Uh, next Friday, big numbers out of Euro. It's, it's just been struggling this past week to get something going. Um, maybe today's the day it changes around. We'll see. US dollar, Japanese yen. Wow. Coming up to the trend line here. This is a big one. Let's take a step back. This going all the way back to June of 2015, five-year trend line price coming right into it right now. Uh, as long as the whole 
as long as the whole uh, risk off stays out of the picture, there's a good chance here that this breaks out finally. Uh, and I want to see where it goes if it does break out. Um, it's very interesting. Very interesting. Nice, nice swap on it. As long as this line over here, the support line over here uh, on a breakout could be an interesting one uh, to place the stop at. I don't know what that she develops. Maybe, maybe, maybe take a piece of her. U.S. dollar says Frank coming off of the resistance over here. Oh, excuse me. Uh, down into the first support so far holding. Trade continues to still be valid. Um, not it seems it's just stalling out. Not much momentum right now, but trade still looking good for anyone who took it. Altra, Aureliana, Riyadh, morning, everyone. All right, let's keep going. Euro remains under fire, lots of pressure on her. She's been having trouble. She's been lagging high, behind just about everyone. Right now, you know, risk has is having its day. That means that uh, Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar. I don't know what the Canadian dollar is even doing yet. We'll look at that in a moment. But Euro continues to be under pressure. Look at this here. It took out this important level on the Euro, Australian dollar. And coming into this area of support here, um, again, the euro's lagging behind. Australian dollar has a little bit of momentum. Let's see what happens down at this support level. I don't see an opportunity to trade. I'm, I wouldn't be looking to trade off this support to the long side. This looks like it's breaking down. You could see almost also at the same time, if this is a left shoulder, head, right shoulder, broke through the neckline now. You're into this area of supply over here, but Australian dollar has momentum and Euro has none right now. I wouldn't be looking to buy off the support. I would just give it room and see what happens. Canadian dollar up into this resistance. This seems to be a similar pattern I'm seeing across the board on all commodity currencies. Uh, we just looked at the New Zealand dollar, Japanese yen had a similar pattern. We looked at the Australian dollar uh, also had a similar pattern here. And this is a pretty big level here. Um, if I think of these assets are able to break above this big resistance line over here, they got further room to go. You see on the other, let's see on the uh, Australian dollar, Japanese yen. Let me get off the 30 minute chart, give you all a better look. There's that resistance, New Zealand dollar, Japanese yen. There's that same resistance and all those pairs are coming up into there. Uh, it's a big resistance. If they were to reject them and we saw the tone of the market change, it's going to be an amazing place to get short. But my intuition says right now that there's a good chance that they're going to break out up to them. I don't see the current tone of the market changing right now. Um, it looks like uh, the world is, look at the markets up another half percent. Um, and, you know, it is what it is. Got to follow the market. Uh, we were talking earlier this morning uh, I, I've been following what's going on uh, in China and the coronavirus. And, you know, if you follow on Twitter, if you just, uh, ha you know, pound sign coronavirus, you see the videos coming directly out of China from people in China and things look horrific. Uh, but the world seems to think that it's not as bad. And we got risk on. So we got risk on. Get on with the risk. This is the pound Japanese yen. And again, we were looking at trading above this line over here. They turned this to support now. Everything was looking pretty good. And until you get those next, I, I believe we're going to trade up into this resistance of here. Um, 
And then let's see what happens next Friday. We have uh, manufacturing and service PMI numbers out of England. And it, the pound right now is super data dependent. Australian dollar also coming off into this resistance. I'm not looking to sell off this resistance. Uh, I think what you want to do is uh, look for a break above unless the tone of the market changes. There'll be plenty of time to get short if and when it does right now. Though the momentum's to the upside. Oof, this looks ugly. Australia, Euro, New Zealand dollar. And again, Euro lagging behind, caught off into the support against the Euro Australian dollar and the Euro New Zealand dollar. Um, but again, leaning into the Euro off of the support, I, I can't do it. Um, maybe if we got all the way back down here, then I would be looking to do that. But right now, um, there's, there's nothing, there's no momentum with the Euro and there's a lot of momentum with the New Zealand dollar today. Uh, Central Bank is on hold for the rest of 2020 and they actually expect growth uh, that's being priced into the market and the Australian dollar. You got wrecked, good morning. Could you guys hear me right now when I'm speaking? Because right now I'm looking at the chat and I'm not looking at, at the charts. So I just wanna check if you guys could hear me or not. Oh, let's look at the pound New Zealand dollar. Uh, similar to the Euro New Zealand dollar, back into this area of support. Um, well, this is interesting here. I don't know. This is interesting, right? Um, it's come off a lot, almost a full percentage point. Pound's looking pretty all right. Pound's looking decent. New Zealand dollar, um, this might be a place to lean in long. You got two big lower highs, and now you're at this area. The thing about this trade, though, is you know right away, if price were to resume out of here, you know right away where you're wrong. And you got a first resistance up here. So it's a good risk to reward. So that's interesting. Put that right under the US dollar, Japanese yen. Oh, let's look at it. We haven't even gotten to it. Let's jump over to the right now to uh, the US dollar, Canadian dollar. Do I think it's a sell? No. Um, I, 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 th I think this is the weakest of the bunch out of right now, the Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar. We, we were talking about that yesterday, actually. We expected it to come off and this, for this resistance to hold, but it's a more of a question of looking, where do you lean in to buy? Do you lean in to buy off this support? Is, has the dollar done in, in its retrace or does the dollar got more room to go? Maybe you get a look down here at this support, right? Now, or, or this trend line. Um, either way, th this is the date to focus on for the Canadian dollar. And this, the, the central bank is very focused on the consumer right now. Um, if they lose the consumer, if, these, if this comes in poor, then th you're going to see the Canadian dollar sell off big time because they're gonna be talking about cutting rates. So I, I don't think it's the time to buy, uh, to sell the Canadian dollar. Um, I think it's, uh, you know, the, the DXY of course is, has been bull ever since the breakout of this trend line. And then the retest down here has been uber bull. And is that gonna continue? Um, I, I don't know, um, but, I'm looking to see if it comes off and at least test this area of support I, on a test of down here of this support or this one down here. I um, I'll be looking for this trend to resume. Of course it could break out here to the upside. And then I would be looking to play long the U S dollar Canadian dollar at this point in time, but Canadian dollar seems to be the weakest, one of the weakest currencies right now. Uh, and this was, a. Uh, uh, you know, we expected it to this resistance to hold up here, but 
I'm looking to buy, you know, uptrend, looking to buy off of supports, not sell and pick tops. Uh, oil is, uh, I guess, just first of all, look how far it came down hard and quick, coming up a little bit, but you could see it tracking all the risk assets. This looks very similar to the Australian dollar, US dollar. It looks very similar to the Australian dollar, Japanese yen. And it's just, and then here you go, all, all the yen pairs, we looked at that resistance right above. The same thing here on oil. It's just tracking all of that risk assets because, guys, if you did get the alert, you know, the coronavirus is contained and there's no problem whatsoever. Actually, you can resume flights into China, in and out of China. Everything's okay. Um, that's what the market, that's what China's telling us and that's what the market's believing. Um, I don't believe it. Uh, and I think this is just going to, you know, let's see where it ends. It looks like it's going to take out this resistance unless things escalate quickly. And if it takes out this resistance and you get up into here, this might be an area to lean into sell, right? But right now, whether, whether you like it or not, meaning whether it makes sense or not, markets got risk on, right? And that's why oil is jumping up here. US dollar, Swiss franc. So I, I mean, to be honest, I don't really love it. The play was coming off of this resistance and then uh, it holding, being rejected down. And it looks okay. It's slow bleeding. Uh, it, it, it looks like there's a good chance the dollar is going to hold up here today, meaning come back off. Uh, and if that happens, and, and as long as this area holds over here, look, if, if we start making new highs here, clearly you're wrong, which it means, you know, if, if, if you get stopped out, but until then, it looks like there's a good chance we're going to retrace into this profit target over here. If the dollar comes off, it's a dollar story, uh, then there's a good chance that this continues to, to reach its take, to, uh, take profit level. Nick, Iwan, Hanero, we got a full house. Glad to see you all. DJ, DJ, you got to get into our Telegram group. I know you don't like Telegram, but we did this for you. All right, let's keep going. Um, This looks pretty interesting down here at this support. Again, not much love at all for the Euro. Um, and therefore, maybe things are going to turn its way in a little bit. The Euro is probably one of the weakest currencies. Of course, the Japanese yen is the weakest currency today. But Euro has been towards the bottom down into this pretty heavy support down here. Right? This is pretty heavy across the board. Um, Canadian dollar has got a bit of uh, a push from, from oil today, but I don't like the Canadian dollar. I'm not a bottom picker, but this looks like a place possibly to lean into. I don't know. What do you guys think? Oh, not, not only do I have the Catholic edge, my mother was Jewish and there's nothing like a Jewish mother's guilt. So I got you on that. But we didn't even take a look at, um, at, at the pound. Let's take a look at the pound and nice night. I mean, you're an oil guy, but this is just a beautiful risk on play. 
And that's what the market's doing right now. It's got risk on. You know, I think right now that like good news is good news and bad news is good news also. So even if we find out there is an escalation in cases overnight, which there won't be, the way that they're counting coronavirus cases now has changed. If you test positive for the virus, but don't have a fever, they're not counting you as a new case. <laughs> That's really dangerous, don't you think? Uh, I think we break above here. I think we break above here on all the Japanese yen pairs we looked at that are also coming in towards this level and well, uh, and on oil here as well. If we don't, if we are rejected off of, it'll be clear. Uh, and when I talk about here, I'm talking about Australian dollar, Japanese yen, Canadian dollar, Japanese yen, um, New Zealand dollar, Japanese yen, all towards that same resistance level. Uh, if we're rejected, it will be easy for us, to, easy enough for us to get short, but I'm looking towards all those breaking to the upside right now. Let's take a look at the pound, US dollar. So it looks like overnight in London, pound was made a, um, I thought I read a headline, it was into the 200 day moving average, uh, but it looks like it was into this resistance, clear as day to me. And then it's since been rejected back down and now stabilizing. Um, that's an important resistance level up there. Get above it and she might be drifting higher. I think that could be do uh, dollar dependent. Obviously, the pound and the euro are both a little bit of laggards right now. That could change, but right now they're both lagging a little bit. We know where the strength is. Strength is New Zealand dollar, Australian dollar. Um, so I don't know here. I'm, I'm not looking to sell. I'm focused more on next Friday, the flash manufacturing and services PMI numbers out of, out of England because right now the pound is uh, – super data dependent. So I don't, I'm neutral here. I don't have much of an opinion at all, um, at all. Let's check them all out. Um, let me start with Gabe. What do you mean? Aren't aren't you long New Zealand dollar Japanese yen? You were long this going into the um, into the announcement yesterday. I thought you hit a whole run. I want to take a look back next at the Euro Canadian dollar. Um, what is going on? That looks ugly. Let me pull up this. Euro Australian dollar, uh, you know, clearly trading into this support here. Uh, now, uh, I, I definitely don't feel obliged to lean and buy off of this support over here, uh, simply because the Euro has just been lagging. Um, and I don't, I don't see a reason, but as far as the Euro Canadian dollar, this one looks a little bit more interesting to me. Now, if you short since London, boom, I mean, beautiful. But are you looking for a break here? You, you lead us, let me know. I'm, clearly there's a little bit more room possibility to the downside on price spikes, but are we gonna break down out of this? This looks like a good buying opportunity for me, um, except that I don't want to, you know, pick a bottom. Yeah, we just looked at the pound US dollar not even two minutes ago. You could pull back on the on the stream on the feed. There's nothing going on. Pretty neutral. The pound. Uh, Pound's lagging a little bit. Next Friday is a big day for the pound. You can see that the pound um, came up into this resistance during London. 
I think it's also the 200 day moving average. It's the resistance and it's since trading off. Um, it's neutral. There's, there's, there's not much to say about it right now. All right. Um, seems pretty, pretty clear today. Again, we're riding risk on today. Uh, U.S. indices are opening up another more or less half a percentage, trading at new all-time highs. It's just um, can't fight it. What's Tesla doing, by the way? Monster. Gold coming off a little bit today. Uh, it looks like it wants to definitely go a little bit lower. Um, I'm watching the, uh, over here on the US dollar Japanese yen now as we're coming to this big breakout area of this trend line over here. Uh, and I'm going to be following that if we get the breakout over here. Um, let's, let's take a look at both. We'll take a look at Ethereum in a second. If we break out over here to the upside over here, um, I, I think we're going higher for sure. It looks pretty clear. Um, and again, on all these pairs, I think we're breaking out to the upside. This is tracking oil as well. DJ, I have to look. I don't remember the exact trade we, we talked about. I don't know if it's on a chart you sent me. Oh, yeah, 100%. I mean, we never broke the neckline and held it. If you peek, if you, I can't see very well, but if we, it, it looked like a false break and then you started coming back up. Um, I think if you break, just to keep it simple, DJ, if you break above this resistance over here, um, I, I don't, I, I, I see the risk on continuing right now. I don't see, uh, I don't see it abating. Let's look at the cryptos. Oil looks uh, pretty bullish. I mean, up up huge today, obviously. Uh, take a look at the daily time frame with me. So, oil, in my opinion, right now is tracking uh, risk, and risk is on, and you know, uh, China is basically falsifying all the new cases. So it appears to everyone that the, the new cases of coronavirus are diminishing every day. Why that's not reflective of reality, it's what's being shown. And for whatever reason, the market's buying it. You know, a, a few workers went to back to work this week in China. More importantly, the central bank of China is, is got everyone's back on this. Uh, and at the end of the day, liquidity rules. Um, 
you know, China's asking for, for countries to reopen flights to China. And they're, they're I mean, I, I feel like they're playing poker and they're bluffing. And what, what, what is, you know, what I'm looking to happen is for that to backfire on them and the things, you know, to spread and get worse because of it. And if that does, we're going to see a huge, you know, return to risk, risk off. But right now we don't have that right now it's risk on and we're coming up into this area of resistance over here. Um, if, if it's rejected, then we have the opportunity to short it, but you also need to see the narrative change a little bit. I think we break up to the upside on oil. I think we break up to the upside on the Canadian dollar, Japanese yen on the Australian dollar, Japanese yen and the New Zealand dollar, Japanese yen. Now, if they're all rejected here, it's a clear play to play the rejection, but that's not where I'm leaning. I'm leaning towards a breakout to the upside. Nice heads up, Blair. Wow. I mean, what, 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 what else could you say except, wow, I want to look at this on the, maybe the weekly time frame. And before we go back, I want to look at uh, uh, Ethereum BTC. So Ethereum is great gaining against Bitcoin. Forget about the US dollar. Um, it looks like it's coming up into an area though of, of big resistance. You can see that on, on Ethereum Bitcoin and then look at Ethereum US dollar. you know, also coming up into this area of resistance. So we were just talking about Bitcoin earlier this morning and I guess on a different chart, Bitcoin is coming up into an area of resistance as well. And I don't think it's gonna break out. This area right here of 11,000 11, is pretty big resistance. This, is, this whole blue area is a supply zone. So as you got Bitcoin coming into resistance, and if you break above this trend line over here, that, that means to me that the new bull phase of the market has started, um, which I think is too soon. So I, I think we're going to get held down by this resistance if we get up to 11,000. If we break out, happy joy, but I don't think so. And I think the same thing here. And I think if Bitcoin comes off, I think the alts are going to follow as well. The best thing for the altcoins would be for Bitcoin just to consolidate and not, and not lose any value. And then you would see Ethereum possibly have the chance to come up here and break. But I, I think we're coming into pretty st strong resistance here. Uh, Monroe is, is one of the few cryptocurrencies outside of Bitcoin that has a real use case and that's privacy. So um, Monroe, Monroe is, is good. It's beautiful. Yeah, Monroe is a beast right here. I mean, Monroe does have, a, a, a again, a real world use case. The thing is, is though this year, you're going to see, you're looking, 
uh, for a lot of other coins to implement privacy features, whether that happens on Bitcoin Cash or Litecoin first. Um, and once those coins do implement privacy features, I'm not sure what happens to Monroe in the long term. Uh, and then eventually Bitcoin is looking to implement privacy features. So I, I'm not sure. I think the thing is, you know, for me at the end of the day, for, for, for me, the only uh, coin that you, you want to hold or, or feel comfortable holding at the end of the day is Bitcoin. So, which is why I trade foreign exchange in Bitcoin, right? Um, th there are a lot of traders who look to play the altcoins in order to increase their Bitcoin positions. They're looking for when, when all coins are outperforming Bitcoin, they, they get involved and they're looking for those large gains in order to increase their Bitcoin positions. My, my thought here on the, uh, on the Canadian dollar, Japanese yen, a Swiss franc, Japanese yen. Um, I think I'm still waiting for a break of this trend line over here. Um, Japanese yen does, all right, so the Japanese yen looks like it is in across the board at a very important resistance level, right? And from the US dollar, the big one. And then we already looked at these multiple times today. Look at the resistance level here. Look at the resistance level here. And, and here, and if, if that momentum continues, right? And this is a, a barometer of, of everything's fine. We're gonna recover quickly from the whole coronavirus situation. And then we're going to be looking back at growth again. If that's the case, then the Swiss franc is going to be testing the high over here. You know, um, if we get another bout of, of risk on, this trend line breaks. Just follow this trend line, wait for a break of this trend line before going short. And until then, um, you want to lean towards the upside. So again, Euro has just been, um, can't find any love. Uh, and, you know, eventually like pendulums, things, things change and switch, but Euro has just been having a tough uh, recent bout of things. And you could see that here, we had this support line drawn in as a take profit level and it, it came into it today. So is it bottoming here? Um, there's a decent chance that not bottoming the near term bottom or there's a good chance but at the same time there's no way i'm leaning in to buy it there's no way that i'm going to lean in to buy this i mean that looks it just looks terrible but um it's definitely out of area this was a take profit area we had in uh, and now, you know, just like on the U.S. dollar, Canadian dollar, I expect it's going to come off here, but I, I don't want to be a buyer. I'm, I don't, I'm, I purposely don't pick bottoms because in the, in the long run, it's a losing man's game. And even though it looks like uh, that here's a good chance that it's going to, you know, it's going to stabilize and retrace, I, I don't pick bottoms. It's the same thing here on the US dollar, Canadian dollar, even though that looked like this was going to be the top, we were going to come down and just don't do it. US dollar, Swiss franc, we've been tracking. So we looked at price coming into this resistance level. This was the area to short it off the resistance. Um, 
and came back into the support area. That support, let me get rid of this thing. Came back into the support area over here and now retracing back up into this near resistance. Um, I think it's more of a, of a US dollar story right now. And the dollar is also, you know, taking the look back up here towards the highs over here. Uh, so I don't love the US dollar Swiss franc, but the, the trade remains valid off of the resistance here. Um, came back down into the first support. Uh, it, it, it depends on what's going to happen with the dollar. If we trade back above here, you're wrong on the trade and get out of the trade, right? Even if you had your stop loss uh, more up here, I think it's time to move it down just towards the high over here. And if it gets taken out, it gets taken out. New Zealand dollar, US dollar. New Zealand dollars got a lot of, um, so this, this whole big move over here was last night, the central bank of New Zealand met. They said they're not gonna be cutting rates for all of 2020. And they also said that they're going to actually expect growth in the second half of the year. So you have this little line right now, this line has now become an area of support to look at. As long as you're trading above this area, uh, and if you're if if anyone is in this trade long, right, it's a good idea to move your stop now, right around where my mouse is, 0.6443. Um, you trade start trading below there, and things look like they're in jeopardy. But above here, everything looks very bullish. It looks to me um, whether it consolidates after it's up already. What was it up today? A percentage point. Where's the New Zealand dollar? It's up over a full percentage point. That's a lot. Will it continue? Um, you know, in the near term, I believe so. But right now the dollar is attacking again. Uh, if the dollar comes off, New Zealand dollar would trade up. The, the move's already been made for, for the day on the New Zealand dollar. So you don't want to chase after that right, right now necessarily. But New Zealand dollar uh, looks like in the, in the near term, it's, it's got a little momentum behind it. So I just want to say thank you, everyone, showing the love today, hitting that like button. And the reason, for two reasons. First of all, it really, uh, it, it shows me that you appreciate uh, the time being spent here together, as well as it helps the Google algorithm know that people enjoy this video and then share it with others. And that helps other people who have not yet known about our community find out about it, which brings, uh, you know, other value into our community. Because as you can see, we do a really good job learning from each other. So I just want to say thank you. All right. So we got Powell speaking um, at the top of the hour or, or, or testifying before the House or Senate. Not sure where he is today. All to definitely rocking and rolling today. which is just a really good positive sign for the whole crypto market in general. Silver coming off hard, gold off a little bit, and dollar is just holding up, is yet has been relentless. And really the Euro has been the biggest recipient of that. So uh, what, what is anyone tracking inter, intraday? Where, where is everyone focused in on today? What are we looking at? Uh, what, what do you guys see in the market right now? Um, 
that's what I'm interested in. I'm going to take a quick two minutes. All right. Jeffrey, I agree. I'm also on that same boat. I'm focused on the Australian dollar across the board uh, from the Australian dollar Swiss franc breaking out over here to the upside, the Australian dollar US dollar uh, and also the Australian dollar Japanese yen. Um, and I think that's going to continue in, until it changes. Uh, I. I'm also looking for that to continue for a little bit, but uh, I'm just ready. You know, I'm always looking to the adverse position of mine. And uh, if, if I see that risk on come back into the market, you know, I'm not going to, uh, you know, I'm not going to hold on. I'm going to give it right back up. Um, the Telegram group, we, we have a, a, a Telegram group. Uh, not a public telegram group, a telegram group. If you've been involved in the chat and you would like to, in the live streams, you know, you contribute to the community, go ahead and send me an email. And I'll send you the link to the group. Yeah, I think so too. Mima. Right now, the the dollar is holding up, and it's a big question for me what the U.S. dollar is going to do. Let me pull that up first, right? So we start breaking out to new highs, and especially above this level over here, I don't want to get away in the way of that dollar because it could go, it could go higher, right? We're looking for ninety nine fifty first. So if the dollar breaks up here, but uh, if, if the dollar is able to trade off, then you're going to look at the Swiss franc coming down into this pocket, you know, for that take profit. But I, I think it's range bound. You're looking, I think, let me see the levels you're looking at exactly. 50. I'm sorry. I mean, you're looking at the U S dollar Canadian dollar. Hold on. Different story. 
We got the resistance up at 335 uh, and then 3330. That's a big range. So that would mean the dollar definitely significantly weakening, which I'm all about if that were to happen, that would uh, suit me just perfectly right now. But I, I don't know, I'm so undecided on what the dollar is gonna do. Um, now, I think this is all about next Friday for the, for the Canadian dollar. I think, and ever since the central bank met, I've been focused in on this date. So I think this is gonna be a big one. Um, down into this support over here and this resistance area over here, if we get down into there, I think that I have to be uh, looking for a buy off support over there. I, I will be at the time. Um, Heath, I, could you please resend it? I, I definitely responded. Um, I'm sorry, I don't know why, but could you please resend that? I definitely thought I responded. All right, that's a good outlook. I like that a lot, Hanero. Mima, I think you yeah, got good levels in. Actually, I think you got, let me see this. This. See where I'm putting the support first. Where did you say 303? Yeah, right down there. That's a good one. Make that one bright. Equities holding their huge gains is just a sign to me of, of that risk in the markets. Australian dollar pairs off their highs a little bit, but this is big resistance over here. First look, they didn't take it out. Um, Canadian dollar has the backing today of, of oil coming up into this resistance area over here. Your euro, US dollar, you said euro. So this, you expect is gonna continue trading down for a while. No one likes the euro today, not today, right now. Uh, Euro US dollar, we have obviously, this is a New Zealand dollar story day. That's because of the central bank meeting last night and they said there's gonna be no rate cuts in 2020 and they expect growth, the, the New Zealand dollar appreciating hot and heavy today. Um, probably most of the move is, it's already up a percent, New Zealand dollar, US dollar. Probably most of the move for today is, is priced in. Um, There you go, Heath. Um, but it looks it looks very healthy right now, uh, and I think it's got further gains to make um, in in the in the days ahead, as long as risk on maintains itself. As long as risk on maintains itself, I think there's further gains to be seen in the New Zealand dollar. 
uh, Australian dollar. And I think, I think also it looks like the Canadian dollar is firming up with that stronger oil. But look at the dollar. Let's see what the US dollar, Canadian dollar is doing on that. Canadian dollar is in the face of the strong dollar push. It's still maintain, oh, there you go, but maintaining. This Fed, the beginning of Fed Powell's speech, I, I don't know. Um, all I know is what's happening. Further pressure on the Euro. Do I do back testing? No, I do forward testing on all my system development, and I have for the twenty for twenty years. It's always been forward testing, um, and a hundred trades is is too small of a sample size. A thousand trades is too small of a sample size. You you know. US dollar is pushing here. I don't know how long it's going to last or, or, or what. I have no idea. This could have been just as Powell sat down to begin his testifying. US dollar, Swiss franc, you know what? The, the one thing that I could definitely uh, recommend, unless something changes drastically in the market, for example, if right now um, Iran was to bomb uh, or, or the US was to uh, attack Iran, that's a big event that that changes everything and you could get out of your original setup and position, right? If all of a sudden there were uh, 50 coronavirus cases reported in the United States, okay, that's a game changer. Get out of your positions. But otherwise, you always stick to your original analysis and wherever you put your stop loss. Otherwise, you're going to get shaken out of all your good positions. Uh, you're going to take profits way too soon. And you're gonna, um, you know, also be taking losses too, you know, too soon, not giving the trade time to develop and fall into profit. So wherever your stop loss is, if you're trading the U.S. dollar, Swiss franc right now, and you have your stop, you know, above here where this resistance is, let's say your stop is in right above this high right now. Uh, as the trade fell into favor, you move your stop just above this high over here, and it's around nine point nine seven eight, or or point nine eight rather. Um, I think you want to keep your, your stop in there until it gets hit. Give the trade the opportunity to continue to move and develop. I do not move my stop losses once I've set them. I, let, I don't take the loss ahead of time. I give the trade the room that, that I intended it to give. The only thing I do is trade falls into profit. I then move my stop either to lock in profit or to break even. There you go. If China released the actual numbers, you could get off your, your risk on positions, take them off right away, because that would be appropriate. What's going on, Martin? We're seeing, uh, I don't know if that little pop was, was Powell sitting down to testify or, or what it is, but you saw a pop, you saw the euro under pressure. Is the US dollar, Japanese yen breaking out to the upside? Oh, we didn't check that out today. Let's take a look at the Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar, because obviously the New Zealand dollar is the story of the day. Uh, back down into the support over here. That is interesting. This is a good setup, Martin. And off of the support over here, I like that. 
Uh, now, was this a false break yesterday over here to the upside? I don't think so. And why I say I don't think so, I think because you, what you saw happen in the New Zealand dollar was rightfully so. You saw that sharp appreciation because the market was catching up to the central bank. Um, is it priced in now correctly? And does the Australian dollar lead off of here? Uh, I like this long off support over here. I I will have to wait for a trigger, but I do want to put this onto onto my watch list. Great eye, Martin. Where's my watch list over here today? Darren, send the email over to uh, to that email address. We'll get you involved in the in the Telegram group. Look at this five minute charts. Dollars a beast. So something I noticed yesterday, though, on CNBC, I saw a clip someone posted on Twitter and, they, and all, all the people were talking about uh, Bitcoin. And basically, what they, they said two things. They said, you know, Bitcoin's gone from $20,000 back down to $3,000 and now is at $10,000. Uh, number one, most likely a lot of the weak hands got uh, shaken out of Bitcoin. Then the number two thing they said is like, listen, like gold, I think what we're seeing in Bitcoin is uh, people taking a trade counter to, to the central banks. Uh, and it was just really interesting to see that on CNBC, all of a sudden for who, you know, for the first they're like, it's, it's, it's rat poison, just like Buffett. They're like, it's, it's terrible. Da, da, da. And then like last year, they started paying more attention. And now they're like, absolutely, Bitcoin makes 100% sense with what the central banks are doing. If you ask me, there's no question that Bitcoin's going to win out over fiat. And it was really interesting to see their uh, mentality changing. Canadian dollar is holding up well right now with the US dollar coming in strong. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure Peter uses Bitcoin as a way to stay relevant and, and for marketing. Um, I like Peter, you know, I, I've, I've learned a lot from him back in the day. And um, I also think that he really, in the bigger picture, he's got it correct. 
his timing was way off because gold, you know, from 2012, 2013, up until six months ago, uh, was in a, in a, in a super bad market. Uh, and the whole time, you know, he was quite bullish on it. But um, that being said, I, I think Peter believes in Bitcoin. I just think that he believes he got in too late. Uh, sometimes it's hard to get people to give up their opinions and, and look at something in a, in a, in a clear light. Yeah, the Canadian dollar has got a lot of power behind it as oil is looking to, to break out over here. Nice heads up. Thank you, Blair. Looks like the dollar keyed off of the release of, of Powell's testimony. Dollar back in beast mode.
I mean, Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar, Canadian dollar, all holding off that dollar attack pretty well. I think the brunt is going towards uh, the euro. Dollar a beast over here. So U.S., I mean, amazing to see such a strong dollar with the, the U.S. equities at all-time highs. This is definitely Brent Johnson's milkshake theory in action, uh, seeing it right before our eyes, also with the strong gold across the board. I blame him. I blame him. But one thing's going to break. I mean, eventually something's got to break, right? Uh, and eventually, you got, I, I gar like, I don't guarantee. I'm at, do you guys think that Trump's going to tweet today? As Powell's testifying, as he did yesterday, that, that the Fed needs to cut rates, that the dollar is too strong. Um, I think there's, there's this good chance of that. <laughs> the end of days is upon us.
Get in Google, Brent Johnson, milk th milkshake theory, uh, and and watch him present it to you. Um, it's definitely it's definitely something. Whether it's right or wrong, it seems to be right right now. Uh, even people that were opposed to him, you know, yesterday are kind of you know congratulating him. Uh, but you definitely want to check it out. Uh, and basically, in the end of it, what it says is that. Uh, because everyone's debt is denominated in US dollars. Uh, I got a link right here. Because everyone's debt is denominated in US dollars that uh, you know the US dollar is gonna keep strengthening. Nice. You got right. That's also a link from uh, Real Vision. So that's that's good stuff right there. So I think you guys have oil inventories coming out in just two minutes. Yeah, for whatever reason, YouTube does not allow those links to go through, even on YouTube link. Let's see how okay, dollar reacts. No, there's a settings. I looked in settings and the setting I have on is allow links from everyone. Yeah, but yeah, of course. I mean, can you imagine the amount of people that go into live streams and probably spam links? Martin, thank you. Thank you very much. Those see too. I hey, some you're you're really um you're really in the zone, I have to say. Uh and I've noticed it for the past couple of weeks. And um definitely, definitely, definitely appreciate all the insight that you're giving and adding.
Angelo, I, I think so too, but it is what it is. And she's getting wrecked. Uh, normally you don't see with six down days in a row. I think it's overstretched also, but it's, you know, dollar if it holds this level over here now if it holds this breakout today and starts breaking out to the upside over here it could just be overbought remaining overbought for an extended period of time and the euro could definitely it's possible see much lower lows but I, i'm with you i also feel like it's overstretched um i would jesse love some coffee please uh big fan <laughs> and if you're brewing i'm joining Yeah, we look at the US dollar. Um, so I see some big resistance over here. Price trading up into it right now. I was having like a bit of, uh, of, a of a problems over here. I stay away from exotics uh, because the low liquidity, low liquidity makes them funky. Uh, but um, hey, listen, if if going back to the dollar, if if it continues uh, and we take out this resistance, this could be going much higher. But it is a big important resistance. Uh, in the same time, if it's rejected over here. You know, maybe you come down and look at around this level over here of 3.85, three next. Um, it's at a critical point here. This is a big resistance level. If it takes it out over here, uh, the first thing that's going to happen is that the first thing that's going to happen is price is probably going to shoot straight up into 0.39 and then probably look back to test that broken resistance, even hold this support. Uh, I want to take a look at the Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar in one second here, Martin. Um, this, this is what, I mean, looking here at the Australian dollar, Swiss franc. So 
I see this happening right here. And this is also coming off of what I'm looking at already. Let me, let me go to my other chart over here. All right. This is the break of the neckline over here uh, out of the reverse head and shoulders. And now I'm looking at this resistance up here with this triangle pattern. I mean, everything points to a breakout to the upside. Uh, so I'm, I'm happy about that. Holding happily with patience and waiting. Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar. I mean, this, I agree. This Martin looks like one of the trades of the day. Buying off this support over here. Uh, I'm already heavily weighted towards the Australian dollar. So I'm not going to take the trade. Uh, but I do like this trade a lot. I think that the, the uh, a reaction to the New Zealand dollar uh, over the central bank news was appropriate. But at that point, I think that, um, you know, I, I think the trend is going to continue here at this bottoming long term pattern. And I think that leaning over into this support is a good idea right now. Yeah, the Mexican dollar continues to be a beast. Aurelian, you are spot on. And, and I still can't understand this. U, U.S. economy is doing fantastic. Um, and Mexican economy is not. Yet here we have uh, the peso outperforming well against the US dollar. Uh, let's look at the, uh, um, is it the Australian dollar, British pound, you said? British pound, Australian dollar. I mean, I, so, I mean, right now we do have that risk on Australian dollar benefiting, um, it, you know, poof, this doesn't look so easy down here. Um, I don't know if she's going to be able to take out this support over here or not. Um, it looks to me like it's starting to, well, you could see this pattern also. You see this definite lower highs over here and then this. So you get a pretty clear indication of what happens next, whether or not you break up out of there or you, you come down. And if you come down, we'll see what happens into that support. Um, I, I, for, for me, it's again, next Friday is a big decider on what happens with the British pound. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't look very clear here. I good good observation, Martin. I noticed that also, uh, except for the Brit. I didn't look at the pound. Yeah, I mean the pound is up on the dollar on the day. 
it really looks like only to be the euro. Good observation. And the euro's down, hit hard. Everything else is, is up except for the Japanese yen. So I think it's the US dollar index anyway. I think it's the most heavily weighted to the euro, then the yen, then the pound. And the euro and the pound are the only two that are um, the, do the, the, the dollars gaining on. And gold. You can see here, even with that, that big dollar push, Australian dollar is kind of uh, holding up and consolidating pretty well. Uh, US dollar, Canadian dollar, same thing. Holding up well with that big dollar push coming into this area, this, this uh, trend line over here, get below it, it opens up the door further down. Um, and then where's my New Zealand dollar? You know, don't forget, it's had this large appreciation. So coming off just a little bit, you know, that's holding up really well with that strong dollar, barely a move. Yen uh, weak, but holding the line here. There's a big trend line over there. And the euro is getting smacked. It's mostly where we're seeing that dollar, that dollar strength in right now. Well, that's, that's a, um, that's a good question. Thinking out loud with you. Um, I, I mean, so if we take a look around at, at the, at, at, at the Swiss franc, we will compare it to other safe haven currencies to get that answer. So against the Euro, they're having problems, the Swiss, right? 
because this is just melting down. So Australian dollar, I'm looking at the weak currencies first. I mean, this has been definitely risk on, right? This is global slowdown. Um, now let's look at Swiss franc versus US dollar. Sorry. We have strong dollar story and yet Swiss franc is is outperforming. And then let's let's take a look at the Swiss franc Japanese yen. Swiss franc outperforming the yen. So Swiss franc has kind of been outperforming everything with those negative interest rates. And then let's also look at uh, gold versus the Swiss franc. Oh, let's see, gold's outperforming everything. But it's hard to say there, Blair. I mean, um, when you see risk on, risk on environment, you, yeah, at that point, I the yen outperforms the Swiss franc. But it seems like the Swiss franc on a larger scale uh, is outperforming everything. And also going back to the crisis of, um, of 2008, the Japanese yen outperform everything, then the dollar, then the Swiss franc. So that, I think that's important to keep in mind in crisis situation like that, 2008, the, it was the yen that outperformed everything. This is the US dollar yen. This is right here. Where are we? This is right here is Lehman bankruptcy. You can see the yen outperforming and the dollar crushed everything. Let's take a look. Coming up now towards <clears throat> the area of resistance, she needs to break out above. Looking good. But just unless we get a big change in the story, a big change in the story, meaning um, we see <laughs> We see risk off enter the market in a hard way. Uh, I'm looking this area of resistance only to move my stop towards break even. And I'm looking for take profits. Uh, I watch how price reacts up here. Um, I'm not looking to give up on the trade anytime soon. Uh, beautiful, even more momentum here. Oil's carrying through, oil's off.
yeah, it's just too soon. I'm going to give the trade room, see if it plays out. Australian dollar must be the second strongest pair of the day, followed by New Zealand. The euro is just getting crushed across the board. What line is that? What's the uh, what's the price point there? It's about where we are right now. The area looking. Pound seems to be a little bit of out of play right now. Ever since this morning, it took a run into resistance, backed off. Now it's, it's trading up. Uh, pound came over here, came straight into the resistance, backed off. Now this looks like to be an area. Let's move this down. This is a clear area of support now. You can see these, these the poke down here, the poke down here. Um, pound looks like it's gonna take a run back towards the, 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 the pound looks like it's gonna take another look at the high over here. Uh, you have your stop loss below here where, where it's time to get out. Um, the, I have to say it was the euro showing the weakness versus the dollar today, nothing else except for the yen. Um, and that looks to be like taking a turn right now. A little bit of dollar coming off a little bit right now. Definitely, um, I think I have a, a, a bullish bias right here off this area of, of support. Uh, you get above here, you get above this resistance and, and you continue holding it. I think it looks pretty good, uh, probably at least halfway between this range. And then I think next Friday is a big important, important data points, the PMI and manufacturing and services PMI numbers. Uh, for sure, if they come in weak, you're going to see the pounds come off hard. So I don't have the opportunity to uh, go ahead and hit the like button for all of you, but I, I, I just want to take a minute to say that you guys are really, really awesome. And we have an amazing, amazing community. And I am so appreciated for each and every one of you because everyone contributes in their own unique way. And that's awesome. And um, I, I just, I just want to say uh, thank you to all of you.
Australian dollar looking beautiful again. Uh, I, I'm looking, oh, you said you were looking for that to continue into next week. I'm looking for it to continue in, until it doesn't, uh, you know, uh, I'm looking for it to continue unless all of a sudden we get, uh, you know, something that gives us a big risk on environment, which that could happen quickly. If, for example, the Chinese retract the people going back to work or, or Foxconn pushes back the timeline where people are going to work and things like that. Um, you know, it'd be really easy for risk on to enter again. Who's winning this battle? Australian dollar. Um, the, the, there's not too much to add here. Coming down off of this support, all right? Uh, definitely looks range bound. We're towards the lower half of the range. Um, I, I can't say here. I can't say here. Everyone, please um, so let me pause here just for a few moments.
on the on the Australian dollar Canadian dollar here uh, you came off of support down here and it's rising of, over above the support over here it just seems to me that you're in a pretty narrow range of resistance and support over here um, clearly the Australian dollar led by the New Zealand dollar are leading the way today and uh, I think in this risk on type of environment that should continue. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen up here into this support over here, into this resistance over here, though. And I don't have a clear look. Here we got, okay. That makes it a little bit easier. Hold on. You're looking at the 60 minute chart here. It must drop down intraday now. Absolutely. Um, Sherpu, love the trend line you have in here. Now you're on the 60 minute chart here, right? You have not only that, you have look at this line over here. This is support now, this line where the mouse is going through. Uh, you have the two tests of it coming up. If you break up now, you should reach, you know, the take the take profit over here. Uh, don't get too cute on the 60 minute chart, right? Come into the bottom portion of, of your, your area over here. I think that uh, I think that's a good a high probability trade looks good. Looks very good. Euro continues trading at the lows of the day, the lows of almost how far back. Do we take out the low of, of September of 2019? Not yet. That comes in at, at 8791. We were traded down as low as uh, 8862. So about 10, 10 pips off. I'm sorry. 87. Yeah, about 10 pips off or less. 7, 8 pips. active market definitely like it you guys are all looking pretty sharp i like that even more hundred percent in a second. You guys all know I'm not shy. A um, hundred percent in a second.
Sure, bro. Count on that. It looks like the, it looks like the U.S. dollar wants to break out here against the yen. Let's see. All right, everyone. I think this is a good place to wrap us up for today. Listen, uh, if you're not yet into, into the Telegram group where we're continuing throughout the day, uh, go ahead and send me an email. I'll send you an invite link for that. I think this is our, our, our most likes for a, a session in two hours, 31 likes. You guys are awesome. I appreciate that. And again, that really does help grow the community. Um, I look forward to catching up with you more tomorrow. If you're not already part of also this Telegram group here, I'm not including this one here. It's not public. So I'm not going to be including it in the description here. This is the one I send out alerts that I post on TradingView later in the day that is uh, active every day now. So if you're not yet already a part of that, do go ahead. Didn't re Steve, did you, if you sent it yesterday, I responded and uh, I'd, I can't imagine it went to your spam folder. Check it out. I know Heath didn't see it earlier than he saw it. So so um, if, you, if you didn't receive the invitation from me, go ahead and, and send me another email uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll respond back. There's no question within the next uh, 15 minutes, I'll have responded back. And then... Um, and then you're all good. If it was sent this morning or today, I haven't looked. If it was sent yesterday, uh, I responded to all of them. So check. I can't imagine it's going to a spam folder. I'm checking out right now, Jesse. No, I don't see it. You know what? Let me do this. I'll delete this link in a moment. 
there's the link right there to the telegram group i'll delete that uh in just a couple of minutes because i don't, I don't want to keep that a public room uh and then um definitely respond to all emails if i haven't responded to you if you sent the email yesterday that means i didn't get it You don't have to put a subject in. You, you don't even need to send me an email. There's the link right there above your above your post, Martin. Just click on this link right there. That's the Telegram Telegram link, and you got it. All right. I enjoy every day. Okay, you guys rock. I really do. Uh, and I, I'm also enjoying this market. All right, I'm deleting this link now. All right, everyone. Have a great day and I'll talk to you tomorrow.